Good morning, and welcome to the Gospel of According to Kennison, and I am your illustrious host. I am the man, Bill Kennison, and I'm excited to be here with you uh, this morning. And Sherry, we've had a rather sobering week. Uh, every day. Yeah, it has been every day. Every day, and we don't usually... And we're not going to be able to do that today, every prayer request, but I like to put some out, some that really need touches from God. And uh, Good morning, Scott Ross. Love good you. Good morning to Scott Ross. I love Scott. I think of him often. I do too. Very often. Jack Friedman, good morning, Jack. Could not do without Jack, one of my closest friends. Yes, sir. Ready? All right. Yeah, because we have a, quite a few here. Let's uh, start off with, with uh, Christina Applegate, a uh, friend of Sherry's and I that was on uh, Married with Children, regular, beautiful young lady, uh, has been diagnosed with MS. And uh, I met Christina when Sam was filming uh, Married with Children. And then later on, she came out to San Bernardino. I had a radio program, and we did a fundraiser for uh, children, children with cancer. And she was so gracious to come out and help us raise money uh, to donate to that. And so we want to remember Christina in prayer this morning. And she's a strong individual, strong individual, and I know she's going to come out on top. Also, Richard Lugo, I was going to pray for him, and I did pray for him. I was going to have you all pray for him, but this week, uh, everything went great. He had a kidney stone uh, surgery. Good friend, and uh, he is all good. And so we want to remember, or we want to thank God for him. Also, I have a, a, uh, a friend from way back, way back. I owned a comedy club in Madison, Wisconsin called the Comedy Cellar. And one of my favorites, if not the most favorite com comedian that I had there that was a regular was a young man named Eric Alver. And uh, Eric needs a touch physically. He needs a touch physically. He's having trouble walking and, and functioning. So we're going, to, we're going to hold Eric up in prayer. And then uh, Judy Carpenter, uh, she broke her ankle in two places and is having surgery. We definitely want to remember her in prayer. And then we had a good friend, actually also did business with us when we were in California, and that's Nancy Souter Roost, for you that are in that area. It's well known and... Uh, she, she transitioned to the next level of existence this week uh, from the complications of COVID. Uh, also, we want to remember Danny James, uh, his beautiful wife, Teresa, also made that journey this week. And our prayers go out to Danny. He watches every week. I'm sure that Teresa watched also. And uh, we want to pray, remember him and his family in prayer. And then we have a man named Dan Benningfield. And Dan was a, uh, he's an organist. He still plays. Uh, he's, I think he's older than me, but he still plays. And uh, he's been battling cancer. So we want to speak healing uh, there. And then I talked to a, a uh, gentleman yesterday that just blew me away. Uh, he's a food critic that, again, you in California may know. He's well known, Alec Morgan. And uh, he called me, and uh, we talked and laughed and everything else. He had a quadruple uh, heart surgery. And so, uh, but he's doing fantastic. And uh, he said to tell everyone that, that he's, he's doing great. So we want to thank God for, for uh, what he's doing for Alan. 
And uh, we're still praying for a good friend, friend comedian, Judy Tenuta. And it looks like she's just doing great, Sherry, but she's a fighter. It's going to take, it's going to take more than some cancer to get rid of her. She is a fighter. Also, uh, Jerry Adler Scott uh, in Las Vegas. We want to remember him in prayer. He's battling uh, COVID. Been in the hospital now for a couple weeks at least. And so we want God to touch him. Uh, Sandra Skurzik up in Boston has an unspoken request. Uh, Bobby Luddington's uh, sister-in-law. We want to remember her in prayer. And then Crystal Chris, which always like that. Crystal Chris. Chris Chris. Chris Chris. And she's married to uh, Gary Chris. When we opened the church there in Peoria, Illinois, we hired Gary to uh, be our, our organist, our keyboardist. And he was fantastic, by the way. I'm sure he still is. But they had moved to Dallas. And we got to see him, what, about a year ago? Maybe a little longer than a year ago. Way too long. We want to see them again. But we want prayer uh, for her. And then I got a message this morning from Autumn in Indiana. And uh, first she sent a, a, a clip that she had watched these two young men that uh, they have a program. I don't know what the program is, but uh, they weren't familiar with who Sam was. And they saw a clip, and so then on their program, they decided to play this other clip, the clip that they hadn't watched, and it was where Sam was talking about that Jesus, he knew Jesus had never been married because... Uh, a wife would never buy that, that resurrection story. He takes off on Friday with 12 other guys, shows up on Monday, like he'd been sleeping in a ditch. I'm not going to do the routine. But Sherry, they laughed so much on this. Doing this, The one fella had to throw up in a bag. Oh, my. And it just was hilarious. And uh, But I, the reason I say all that is, is that, you know, every once in a while someone sends a a uh, request and it just it just hits me and autumn uh, has spastic cerebral palsy and her and her husband Stephen uh, watch us every every week and uh, she was able to walk and everything and then she injured her foot and hasn't been able to walk she's been confined to a wheelchair for 25 days and she mentioned someone, and that is Patrick Bagden. Patrick is battling geoblastoma oh brain cancer. Mm -hmm. That very few uh, survived that. And he's doing great, by the way. But Patrick watches our program. He uses our principles every day. He'll post at least once, sometimes two or three times, different posts, posts during the day. And the post really, uh, he'll, he'll inject a personal story, but it's always back to God is going to heal him. God is going to heal him. And I don't know if Patrick realizes how many people that he's affecting. I don't know how, I don't know that he has got so many viewers from our program uh, that are praying for him and also are following him. Well, Autumn brought him up. Autumn is here. Yeah, Autumn's of God. Love you, Autumn. And But Autumn brought him up. And pretty much, you know, God, I, I watch what God's doing for Patrick. And I believe he can do that for me. Autumn, I believe he can do. I know he can do it for you. Have that commitment that, that Patrick has. And I'm not asking just for you to be able to walk. I'm asking God to heal you of the cere cerebral palsy. Sure, we, we, we don't have time to go over the people that contact us and that uh, have had healings, miracles, blessings. But every once in a while, I think of someone. 
And I remember when we pastored in Rockford, Illinois. Now, you knew her your whole life. There was a lady named Ruth Geiger. Do you remember Ruth? Oh, how could I forget Ruth? And Ruth was a strong lady. She was a strong lady. She was a strong lady. I got to meet her after the fact, but I knew her for years after that. She was given six months to live. Now, I want to show you the difference. What can happen in the difference of your attitude and your thinking? I had a, a very, probably my closest friend in the ministry named Mary Smith in Buffalo, New York. Ruth Geiger had cancer, had the same cancer that, that uh, Mary did. She had surgery, and they told her, you have six months to live. Here was the difference, and I loved Mary. I, I loved her. She was one of my closest friends. We confided many, many personal times to each other. She asked me to come up and take care of the church, and I did. You and I spent a, we spent a year that seemed like 10. They were in Buffalo, New York. If there's any... <laughs> I know I've got, I know I have listeners that watch us every week in Buffalo, but I'm going to tell you something. If there's ever a godforsaken town or city, it's Buffalo, New York. It could have just been the situation, but because... No, Lord, no, I'm talking about the city. Yes, it was bad. Best Italian food ever had in my life, by the way. But Lori Love, we still... Restivo. Restivo. Have one of the best... Oh, no, I, we, have, we have several still that... But it's in between two lakes. For you that's never been to Buffalo, New York, it's in between two lakes. That year that we spent there, they had snow flurries, at least snow flurries, every month of the year. It was always gloomy. But I want to get back to Mary and Ruth. Here's two ladies had the exact same situation. Mary would not come back to church. I was pastoring the Word of Life there in Buffalo. Beautiful, beautiful group of people. Just packed to the walls. And I would ask Mary, Mary, they want to see you. No. 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 Sherry, she died almost exactly six months later. Ruth Geiger in Rockford, Illinois was given six months to live with the same cancer. She lived for over 30 years. 30? Yeah, I, I preached the service of two of her children. Their funeral. And she's, she lived. What is the difference? One made up their mind. No. No, I may go, but I'm not, I'm not letting this cancer take me. The other, which you would think would be the one that would be doing that, she's a preacher and a great preacher, quit. And I hope that doesn't sound like I'm being critical. But she just quit, Sherry. She just quit. Autumn is not a quitter. I can tell you that from reading the message she sent me this morning. And God love her, and we're holding up in prayer, and not only us, there's about 3,000 others that's also going to be holding you up in prayer. I want to get into our message this morning. I read a statistic. I read a, a I could not believe it. Sherry, you won't believe it because I haven't even told you. But I wrote down the, the note. 1,700... And 34 pastors either quit or fired every week in the United States. I want you to think about that. Over 1,700 pastors. Now, folks, most of these preachers, most preachers, Lisa, Sharon, I knew, they never had a pension plan. 
A lot of them, including Cherry's parents, didn't have life insurance. They didn't believe in it. Seventeen hundred. I, I hope. I hope they get the word. You say why? I can change their life. They need to start watching this program. Life is not over for you. I don't care. My my father was thrown out of two uh, organizations: the Assembly of God and the Church of God. Life was not over. I remember we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and a big big preacher actually he spoke at the. Uh, uh, memorial that they had for the uh, uh, people that were killed in that Oklahoma City bombing. Remember that, Sherry, back in about, I guess, about 95? Somewhere there, 94, 95? Carlton Pearson. We were in a big meeting there in Tulsa, and we were teaching what we're teaching here, and we started with about 20 people I'm going to tell you, for the first month, there were probably 20 people there. Then the word started getting out, and pretty soon, you couldn't get a seat to sit in. You couldn't find a parking place. And many, and Carlton Pearson had a large church in Tulsa. A large church. Well, a couple hundred of his people started coming to this crusade that I was, that I was doing. His godmother and sister started coming to my crusade. They asked me, can we take, we used to, to sell tapes, if you couldn't afford them, we'd give them to you other services. And uh, they asked if they could take some to Carlton. I said, by all means, help yourself. Take what, whatever you need. So they did. They, they took it to Carlton. I remember that they came back and uh, I asked them, I said, well, what did Carlton have to say about the message? And I, I, I love Pastor Pearson. I never met him personally, but I, I loved him. I loved his ministry. And I remember they told me what I expected them really to say. Said he has a deeper ministry. But it's like a seed you planted. And a seed got planted in Pastor Pearson. He started teaching and preaching what we were teaching and preaching. Because he listened to those tapes. Well, it wasn't long until he started losing friends. Started losing preacher friends. Wasn't long until Oral Roberts condemned him. Kenneth Copeland condemned him because of his message. And I tried so hard to get to find or to get a hold of him. I left messages. And I simply wanted to tell him, life is not over. It's just beginning. Life is not over. I'm going to tell you today before we get into this message. Hey, this is a new beginning. This is a revolution. I don't care what other preachers think. I have many of them that watch my program because you can see who's who's watching. They pay more, probably more now than I mentioned it, but I know. And many of them have been my friends. Do you know we've never had one invitation to speak at any of those churches? Yet, they want to walk and they want to hear it. It's like I told you, I think, last week of one pastor friend that told me and I had they came up to me and they said, you know, I believe what you preach. But what am I supposed to do after you leave? Like, I'm the only one that, that has this. No, 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 no. God gives it to whoever desires and hungers for truth. Now, I want to put you on the prosperity path. I want to start off with one of my, my favorite verses. I could read the entire Chapter actually quoted to you, but I'm not going to do that. I want to start off with the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want my cup runneth over. That's all I want to tell you out of that chapter. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Listen to that. 
I shall not want. Every one of you need a miracle today. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want when you come to that consciousness. And my cup runneth over. Now I want to give you a kinesinism principle. Make sure that your mind, and I'm going to talk about money, but you can use it for health, for peace, for success, whatever you desire. Make sure that your mind is at peace with money. We're going to talk about the prosperity path. For money comes to you through your mind. Healing comes to you through your mind. You receive whatever your mind can conceive. You receive whatever your mind can conceive. Everything comes to you through your very own mind, not by somebody else. Not by someone else. You condition your mind for whatever you want by loving the good you desire. Love it. Love it. Love it. I want to make this crystal clear. If you really want to have a good experience of money, you have to learn how to love money positively and correctly. I know the first thing you're going to bring up to me is the love, the love of money is the root of all evil. That depends on where you're putting it at. You have to love positively and correctly. I want to say this again, and I'm going to spend more time on it because this is a touchy area. There's two areas I found out if I want to get people a little upset, talk about money or talk about forgiveness. Well, we've talked about forgiveness the last two weeks. We might as well talk about money. There, this is where religious people lose out on the money thing. This is where they lose out on it. You have to love the good which you desire. But you have to love it positively, in a very positive manner, and you've got to love it correctly. That's where religious people lose out. I remember when I was a Young man, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. And I swear, my, my mother and father didn't believe that, but I swear that the majority of people in our church hated money. They loved being poor because they thought they were suffering. They would even get up in their testimonies and say, I'm suffering for his name's sake. He don't want you to suffer for his name's sake. He wants you to have prosperity. He wants you to have divine health. He wants you to have peace. Oh, man. If you really want a balanced, successful relationship with one, you have to love money positively and correctly. Now, I want you to notice in all of my affirmations about money, I'm always careful to say, I do not serve money. I want to repeat it. I do not serve money. Now, listen to the second part. Money serves me. I don't serve it. It serves me. That's the balance. Once you start serving money, that's where the evil comes from. As a matter of fact, once you start serving anything, that's where the evil comes from. If you're serving sickness, that's where the evil comes from. If you're serving depression, that's where the evil comes from. Everything should be loved in its place. I'm so glad to come upon, I think I put it in one of our little things we do on Wednesday. I'm so glad to come upon come upon this Irish proverb. By the way, I always thought I was Irish till I did that, uh, 
that thing on TV, and I found out I don't have a bit of Irish in me. But I was so glad to come upon this Irish proverb some time ago. If you couldn't write it down, money swore an oath that nobody that did not love her should ever have her. Oh, I'm going to repeat it. That was good. Nobody swore an oath that nobody that did not love her would have her. You have to come to peace with money in order to have it. You have to come to peace with divine health in order to have it. If you don't come to peace with money, you're going to have money problems. If you don't come to peace with divine health, you're going to have sickness problems. If there is the slightest, man, I hope you listen to every statement I make. If there is the slightest subconscious feeling that maybe money is dirty, you all know what I'm talking about. If somebody walked in our church when I, when I was young and looked like they had money, we knew they were bad. They knew, we knew they were serving the devil because God didn't have any money. Only the devil had money. Maybe, if you feel like that, maybe you shouldn't have much of it. Money will now and it will always oblige your attitude. Whatever your attitude is about money, that's what you're going to have. It'll oblige you. Money will stay away from you. You see, a child of God cannot have lack. And I'm not talking about getting saved. I'm talking about how you were created in his image, in his likeness. As his child. You are his child. Every one of you listening to me. You are his child. Not because you took some oath. Not because you made your way down to an altar. Now, don't give me one minute. One minute, sure. I told you I'm going to go five, at least five minutes long today. See, y'all need to pray for my wife. She's always trying to get me off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wish I could see you behind that camera going. I'll take all the prayers I can get. <laughs> she, she said she'll take all the prayers she can get. I just want maybe five more minutes. You see... Religious people have such a hang-up about money that in some religious orders, people take a vow of poverty and they don't even realize it. Somehow, they find righteousness in, in poverty. That's a vow. How can a child of God have lack? I don't, I don't understand that. If you have the right understanding with money, you should take the vow of wealth. Somebody said, well, what's the vow of wealth? I swear I'm through with poverty. I swear I'm through with being poor. Now, every once in a while, I even had somebody, I think it was a distant relative that said a boyfriend took her by the house that I lived in and we weren't poor. Well, I'm not going to argue about it if I was poor or not. But <laughs> where the first mistake was, I was raised in a church, not in a house. When I say raised in a church, we lived in the church. But I want you to know that you have to get rid of that vow of poverty. You have to start realizing that prosperity is rightfully yours. Now, be sure you keep your relationship with money balanced. You must let money know point blank that you love it and that you understand what the relationship is. And you must get to the point where money loves you. Boy, that's when your mind is really muddy
money condition. You must get to the point where money loves you and cannot stay away from you. Have you ever met those kind of people? Seems like money just comes to them. Why? They love money. And money loves them. Every time you look around, it should be every, every time it should be that you, here comes more money. The more you use it, the more it comes. The more you enjoy it, the more it comes. Oh, man. I remember we was living in California. And really, when we first went out there, but I mean, the whole time we was living there, I noticed that everything costs more. You that live in California, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. I remember when I came back to, or I came to San Antonio to visit my, my daughter and her son-in-law, and my son-in-law who had their fourth anniversary this week. God bless them, and I wish them a happy anniversary. But I noticed that gas was like a dollar fifty-nine. I'm paying over three dollars in California at that time. Now it's skyrocketed. Well, when I saw the increases there in California, my intellect started to grumble. How do people afford this? How are they able to live in California? Then I reminded my intellect Remember what you teach instead of grumbling about the prices. Say, I give thanks for money and I give thanks for the money to buy whatever I need and I want. I want to get rid of that need part. Jesus used the same principle when he said, Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. That was because the disciples came to him. Said, we've got to pay taxes. Well, there, if they caught you today, you have to pay taxes. If they caught you tomorrow, you have to pay taxes again. They didn't really have a list and check you off and go, well, Sherry paid her taxes, so she's good for another year. No, it was whenever they, they ran into you. Be sure to keep your relationship with money balanced. I'm going to quit because I'd like to stay married to my wife. And uh, she's telling me that she thinks I've been here long enough. And I understand that. People get tired, Sherry. Now, you want to say something, I can see it on your face. Just good morning to all our wonderful oh, yeah, friends. Jeanette, Don, Craig, Jeff Cottrell. Michael Mesmer from Twin Falls, Idaho. Michael Mesmer. Stacy B. My, Michael Mesmer, for one thing. Now he is the greatest magician and hypnotist I've ever come up. Sherry, he finds he finds fairs I didn't even know existed. Misty. Misty. I love I love that. I love I love the little things of Misty, but she posted something. Jerry else. Nicholson. They're all just wonderful. We love having watch you watch us every week. We love being able to say hello. Okay, everybody that wants to go another hour, just <laughs> put on their yes, and Sherry will, will back off. Now, we're going to let you go. We'll finish this up next week. And uh, I want you to know, God loves you. You know, Sherry, yesterday we went to a movie. Yes, and if they want to spend a fun or just a relaxed Sunday, go see Respect. Well, if it was so relaxed, why were we sitting there bawling <laughs> like babies? Now, we couldn't have, now i got to tell you something. We was in the ministry. We couldn't say that. We couldn't tell anybody who went to the movies because religious people didn't believe in movies, but now that they can get it in their house, it's a lot different. Joe Sumter wants to know when the next hour starts. Oh, oh, you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm glad that you brought that up. Uh, oh, she's going to kill me. Jeanette posted something this morning. The Golden Rule. It was great. And she posted it from, from I don't know, it looked like maybe 10 or 12 different uh, beliefs or religions. Hinduism, uh, Judaism, and with Christians doing to others as you'd have them doing to you. And I noticed that 
Every one of them. It was peaceful. Well, not only peaceful, but it was a matter of treating someone. With respect. With respect to how you wanted to be treated. Where did we get all these divisions? I have no... You know, we have people that watch us uh, from Pakistan. Matter of fact, I think they had their Independence Day yesterday. And I wish them a happy Independence Day. But we have several that watch us from Pakistan. We have, we have several that watch us from Kenya. We have Australia. We have England. Well, we just have all over, all over the world, really. That why India? I don't know how many we have that watches from India and the United States. God is wanting a revolution in our spirituality. First thing we need to do is drop all these walls. Drop these walls of it's my way or hell. Because Jesus said, I am the way. And he was speaking about the God in him. You know what his biggest message was, Sherry? What his greatest teaching was? Do you know why so many people got miracles and got healed? Some people got raised from the dead. And, they, and Christians, somewhere they missed the little secret there. Not even a secret. They just didn't see it. That everything he did, he would remind them, the Father in me. I call it God in you. The Father, he was telling them, you have that God that I have inside you. Take up your bed and walk. Lazarus, come on out of that, out of that grave. So much so, they couldn't even keep him dead. They killed him, and he arose and walked this earth for 40 days. Folks, there is a revolution going on, and it's God in you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity this morning. And I ask that you touch every single person that watches this program, that's, that listens to this program. Not only them, let it carry out through them to others. And let's see the change that you've designed for us that we can have. Let us know healing is within us. I speak to Autumn. Let the healing inside of you take over. Patrick, let the healing inside of you take over. I can name them after, one after another. The bless, financial blessings. You just having a hard time financially. Let the, the blesser Take over in you. He dwells within you. And I'll give you all the praise. Amen. God love every one of you. I love you. Sherry loves you. And God bless America.